Hi everyone, it's Anya here and I'm back with another video for Ophelia Talks. And today I am very excited. We finally have the 14 new colours in the Wendy Supreme DK range. And here they are. So today in this video we're going to have a look at these colours. We're also going to have a look at how to make the pegs. Of course, I'm going to try out these colors. So we have a little pattern I'm going to suggest making. And now, seriously, what is a yarn if you can't make a tassel with it? So the very important test of making a tassel with this yarn. Yes, we will be testing that as well in this video today, of course. Now, I might have a thing or two to do with the choice of colours that was made by James Seabrett because this is the company that owns Wendy and that now has added 14 colours to their existing range of 51 colours, which of course now makes it a whole range of 65 colours. I am really excited to start using those and to start incorporating these into my yarn packs, into my projects. So let's get acquainted with them because you will be meeting these colours very soon as well. We also have them, of course, all available on our website as a pack of 65 colours. So you can buy all the colours in the Wendy Supreme Decay in one pack, but also as individual balls. So go and have a look. We've put the word new with the product if this is a new colour. I have put a link in the description box below this video, which will take you straight to our website to have a look at the new colours. But do stay here because we are going to be playing with the new colours in a moment. So the first thing I always do when I get new yarn and certainly when there is a large collection of colours in that same range is make my pegs. And the pegs that I use are actually clothes pegs. Um, and these are the ones I get. I buy them from Amazon. I've got them linked in my uh, store below. So do go and have a look. There's 36 in a pack. So depending on how many colors there are in um, a range of colors, you will have to order you know, multiple packs. They're very inexpensive. Um, and I really like these ones because they're quite nice wood and they're easy to write on and they're quite pale wood as well. You don't actually need them for the, you know, the opening, the the grabbing, uh, because once you are um, you've made them, you won't be opening them, so they will just last. Um, yes, so I am going to be making my last peg, so this one here, and this is the color aloe. So this is Wendy Supreme Decay the color WD61 and it's called aloe. So we're going to write that on our peg. I have these pens here, uh, Artist Pen Fine Liner. It's a 0.3, it's proven to be quite good for writing on the wood. So I'm going to write on there. Aloe. Not my best writing, but like I said, it is nice to write on the wood, but still a little bit awkward. There we go. And what did I say? It was WD61. So WD61. For me, it's really important that I write all that information on there because, of course, I am ordering them you know, for packs and things, and then they always need the actual number and not the name. So... So we've got the peg ready. We are now going to take the end of the yarn. And what I do is I open up my little peg here, put the end in between this bit so it grabs it. And then I just start winding. And I wind tightly and next to each other. And then here where that dent is, I wind into the dent and I wind a couple of times so it fills up the dent and then I wind past the dent. Now I'm winding with my left hand but it is easier to do it with my right once I am at this stage. 
And of course, depending on how long the name is, <laughs> don't wind over your written name. And then I go back down to fill up any gaps that I might have left. And then I come back up just to give it another good layer of colour. And then here I stop at the top. Then I cut off my yarn, take my darning needle and I put it in to my round strands like so, making sure you still have the hole there. Then I try to get the yarn into the hole. Yeah, that's easy enough. There we go. And then I push the needle through. There we go. And then I just tighten up that, make sure this is all nice and straight and cut off this end here. There we go. So now I have my 14 new colours. So we have new colours in the Wendy Supreme DK range. And before I discuss them, I would just like to have a look at the band. So they are a 100% premium acrylic. They are mild machine washable, cool iron, although I never put an iron to it. So I always keep it at a distance. Cool tumble dry, although I never dry it in the dryer. I always dry it flat. Um, you know, so yes, if you've tried this, fair enough, but I'm not going to take any risks with my crochet. Then here it may be dry cleaned. Again, I have not done that because I just wash it very gently on 30 degrees and I dry it flat. And when I steam it, I keep the steam about two centimeters away from it so it doesn't touch it. See what you do with that information. So here we have a needle size of four millimeter, 22 stitches in 30 rows will give you 10 by 10 centimeters of a square that's single crochets. I've never tried this out, so maybe I should try that. And there are 295 meters or 322 yards on this ball. So Wendy Supreme Decay, 14 new colors. Let's have a look at them. So we have Soft Peach, Flamingo, Blood Orange, Sand, Buttercup, Lichen, Lime, Khaki, Mint, Aloe, Lagoon, Violet Mist, Orchid, and grape. WD 52 soft peach, WD 53 flamingo, WD 54 blood orange, WD 55 sand, WD 56 buttercup, WD 57 lichen, WD 58 lime, WD 59 khaki, WD60 Mint, WD61 Aloe, WD62 Lagoon, WD63 Violet Mist, WD64 Orchid, WD65 Grape. Okay, so let's get started with making the triangle in, of course, the new colors so i have already made all the triangles of course because yeah i couldn't stop myself and for the video i thought i would make it in the wendy supreme dk and this color is wd62 and it's called lagoon so it's a lovely blue so that is what i'm going to be using for the triangle i thought it would make a nice contrast with my three and a half pink hook you see Right, there we go. So let's get started with making a slip knot. Insert your hook and you're going to chain four. One, two, 
three and four. Then you go back to your first chain, go into it, always a little difficult. Then loop around the working yarn around the hook, bring it through the chain and through the loop on your hook. You've now done a slip stitch and you have made a little circle and this is what we're going to be using to place our first round of double crochets. So we're going to get started with doing two chains and they will make up our first double crochet. Then you yarn over, you insert into the circle, so find the hole, there we go. Bring up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So that is our first proper double crochet and I use American terminology. So yarn over, insert, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two and yarn over, pull through two. I now have three double crochets because this one is a double crochet. I have tried to take along the end so hopefully that will work as well and this has now made my first cluster. So of course for a triangle we're only doing three sides so we're going to have to make three clusters but for the corners in a triangle we are going to do three chains. So normally for our square we do two chains but of course we are not making a square, we're making a triangle so one, two and three chains for the corner. Then another lot of three double crochets for our second cluster. There we go and one, two, three chains for our corner. Another lot of three double crochets and in fact this is our last cluster of three double crochets because yeah three sides, three chains, one, two and three. Then we go over to that first cluster that we did and these are two chains so we're going to skip those. We're going to go under this V here and we're going to do a slip stitch. There we go. So now we're going to do two slip stitches. So one under the next V and one into the next chain space. And I like to do this just so that we're in a better place to get started for our round two. So here we go. Let's get started. One, two chains. Add another two double crochets to complete our cluster of three. Then we're going to do one, two, three chains because this is a corner. Then three double crochets and we do them all in that same corner chain space. There we go. So three double crochets, three chains and three double crochets. That's what you're going to put in every chain space here. But to get there, our distance is going to be longer than with a square, so we're going to have to do chains in between our clusters on the sides. So one, two chains. And now we're going to do the next corner configuration of three double crochets, three chains and three double crochets. There we go. Because, of course, yes, we need longer sides than usual, so we need to give it some extra width there. So again, we are now doing two chains, then we move over to the next corner chain space, and that's where we will be placing our usual configuration. Three double crochets, three chains, and three double crochets. There we go. Voila. And as you can see, we already have a triangle shape. So now, as you can see, we indeed do need those two chains to get to our closing location. So two chains, one, two, and then here we are skipping these two chains, going under the V and doing a slip stitch. There we go. And this has already made a really nice triangle. 
So same thing again. We are going to do two slip stitches. Get us to the better location. Two chains. Add two double crochets to make up our first cluster. Three chains. One, two and three. And then another three double crochets in that same corner location. There we go. So the corners are made up of three double crochets, three chains, three double crochets. The sides, now that we have a location to place a cluster, we have to remember we have to do one two chains in between the clusters. So go to that first location for your cluster, which is of course that chain two that we have done in the previous row. There we go. And now we are doing another one, two chains before we actually reach the next corner chain space to do our corner configuration. And these little triangles work up so quickly I had such fun making them because of course I've had to make 14 up to now. I was loving playing with the new colours and just trying them out really. Uh, a bit like swatching new paint colours when you get them. One, two, so I decided to swatch the new colours, turn them into some decoration so I can hang it up and enjoy looking at it. So there we go, I am doing my side where I do two chains, then my cluster and another two chains and now I'm already doing my three double crochets, three chains and three double crochets for the corner. So make sure you don't forget that you're doing two chains on the sides but in the corners you're doing three chains because you're making a sharper corner than usual with a triangle your corner is sharper than when you make a square. I can't really show you but I think you can see the difference. Look that would be the corner for a square and this is the corner for a triangle. So there is a slight difference in shape. Two chains and another cluster. So I'm just closing it with my slip stitch here. So here I've done three rounds in my um, triangles. I've done four rounds and I thought that was okay. Uh, you can keep going if you wanted to and make it bigger. But for what we needed, I think uh, four rounds is perfect. So let's do the fourth round. I did my slip stitches, did my first cluster, three chains, another cluster into that same corner chain space. And now of course we start working on the side. So we do two chains, get to the next location where there are the chains to work around. Two chains, place your next cluster around the next lot of chains there, two chains and then here we have a corner so we are doing our corner configuration. And round four will give you on one side one, two, three, four clusters. Round three, three, round two, two and so on. So it's quite easy to count and easy to check. So I'm going to continue and then I will have finished my 14 triangles in the new Wendy DK colours. I've just done my last two chains going under that V and doing a slip stitch and that is the end of my triangle. Now it might be a little bit wavy but it does work. You can still uh, easily flatten it and if you need to you can steam it very lightly then quickly do this 
and it will be nice and flat. So all that remains is to sew in the ends. With any new yarn, it's very important to test the following. How good a tassel does it make? So you will need a box, big fabric scissors and of course your yarn. You know, there is no point in having a yarn if it doesn't make a good tassel. Okay? <laughs> so today I am using, for making these tassels, I am using Wendy Supreme DK in the colour Lichen. And we are going to get started with making our tassel. So take your box, start winding. I'm going to be winding about 50 times. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so that's 50 revolutions. Now I'm going to cut it off, take it off the box, make sure you don't lose any of your revolutions, so you've got your hole there. Cut off another bit of yarn, fold it double, take it through your wound yarn and loop it through. There we go. And I found this is just about the quickest way to make your tassel. Now get your yarn again here. Lay it along your tassel as long as it doesn't jump away. Hold it all together like this. And now you're going to wind a band around the top of your tassel. So don't get this involved because that always wants to play as well. And I'm just winding it really tightly and I'm going over it a couple of times, making sure I end towards the sphere. So a couple of more revolutions, there we go. Let's get this out of the picture again. There we are. So hold everything tightly. Cut off your yarn, darning needle, big eye, put your yarn onto the darning needle and bring your darning needle through the loop like this into the tassel. There we go. And then here we are now going to cut this open. So it becomes a tassel. So go through all the loops and cut them open. See if you haven't missed any. This is why I like using my big scissors so you can do this quite quickly. There we go. And now we're going to attach it to our triangle which we made. So again, using our darning needle, put the top strands onto your darning needle, go through one of the corner chain spaces of your triangle. Then go back into here. You see there's this just looped around, so I'm just going to go under there and I'm just going to pull it all tight. There we go, maybe do another revolution like you were doing a knot and just pull it really tight. There we go. And then the end, you're just gonna go into the sphere, past the band and into the tassels. There we go. Ooh, make sure you don't lose which two strands you pulled through if the needle comes out. There we go. I can feel there's one that hasn't been cut, but that's okay. So this is what we have now. There we go. Now we are holding all the ends in our hand like this. The band is just past my hand on that side. I'm going to cut off all this here. And I'm going to make them all the same length. Careful for your skin here. There we go. Okay. And now we have a lovely tassel attached to our triangle. Oh my goodness, yes. I think this yarn has definitely passed the tassel test. <laughs> so let's get started on assembling 
our garland. Okay, here we are. I have assembled the garland as much as I can. So I'm going to show you the different parts now. So I started using black. So I have here some uh, Wendy Supreme DK black. And I have made a longish, about a meter chain. That's what I always do to start a garland. So I can attach it to whatever I want. Okay, so that's that. Then I started attaching the triangles in color order in the order that they appear in um, the wd uh, numbering um, and it's really simple so let me show you so to get started with the first one you're just going to get started but in between as well you're going to have to do a number of chains now the thing is you just have to decide how many chains you want to do so i've decided to do 10 chains okay so 10 chains one two three four five six seven eight nine ten then you take your triangle so this is my last one that i have to attach and i'm just going to do a single crochet in the chain space then one two three four chains fifth one is a single crochet in that chain two space one two three four single crochet in the chain two space one two three four single crochet in the chain two space one two three four single crochet in the chain space so there we are it's attached as simple as that and now i'm going to do another lot of about a hundred chains maybe 120 that will give me a length of a meter chain and that will be very handy for me to hang it up with. So let's have a look at what it looks like when it's hanging up. Now, as you can see from my table here, I have been having a lot of fun with my 14 new colours. My balls are already looking a little bit worse for wear, but oh my goodness, I've had two blissful evenings trying out the colours, making the triangles, uh, making the tassels and of course making my pegs. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. I hope you will try the new colours go to our website, have a look at them. And yeah, thank you for being here. Thank you for watching this video. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.